What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. Today, we're going to be talking about my top 36 running backs for fantasy football here in week 12 of the fantasy football season. We did the wide receiver version of this episode earlier today, so make sure you are subscribed to this channel. That way, you never miss any future episodes when they do come out. But without wasting any more time, let's hop right into today's video and let's start talking about these running backs. So as you can see, I got the tier maker pulled up on the screen as we speak. I got seven tiers to get through all 36 running backs here in today's video, but let's kick it off in the top tier with the elite RB1. So in tier one, I got three running backs. It's going to be Saquon Barkley, Joe Mixon, and Devon Achan of the Miami Dolphins. Now, there really isn't too much to talk about. Saquon Barkley and Joe Mixon have been literally as good as it can get at the running back position so far this year. Joe Mixon coming off of a huge game. Saquon Barkley, obviously obviously always having big games every single week, it feels like. Now, Devon Achan, he has a very good matchup this week. And when you look at the matchup versus the New England Patriots and you look at fantasy points above expectations, and right now New England is allowing 2.7 fantasy points above the expectations. So a very solid matchup for Devon Achan. He should have the ability to score some extra fantasy football points for us here this week. And he's been very good since Tua Tungavailoa got back in the lineup. Also kind of counting to the fact that it may be a little bit of Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert got banged up last week week. So we'll kind of see how that goes. We'll see how it trends throughout the rest of the week. We're doing this early Wednesday morning. So we still have injury reports to come throughout the rest of the week. But right now, Devon Achan, a tier one running back for me. Now let's move on to tier two. We'll talk about those high end RB ones. And I got four running backs in this tier coming in at number four. I got Christian McCaffrey five. I have Jameer Gibbs six, Kenneth Walker, the third and seven Derrick Henry. And you might be saying to yourself, Hey, Andrew, why is Derrick Henry so far down your rankings? This matchup this week against the Los Angeles Chargers, it is on the road in LA. And when you look at that fantasy points above the expectation, it's a stat that I'd like to keep using this year. Bad matchup when you look at that. Negative 3.5 is the fantasy points above expectation for the Los Angeles Chargers. So a little bit of a tougher matchup. Obviously, Derrick Henry, he is a very, very good running back and he gets a lot of goal line opportunities. So he's still going to have a very solid week. That's why he's still my running back seven. But this is why he is not in the elite RB1 tier where he has been in that over the last couple of weeks. The other guys, they got solid matchups. They should have very good production. Now let's move on to tier three. Tier three, I have five running backs in this tier, and these are the low end RB ones. I got David Montgomery at eight. Nine is Josh Jacobs. Ten, James Conner. Eleven, Kyron Williams. And twelve, Jonathan Taylor. Now the same thing can be said for David Montgomery, Josh Jacobs, James Conner. Solid matchups should have good production. When you look at some of the bad matchups in this tier, it is that Kyron Williams matchup and that Jonathan Taylor matchup. Kyron Williams gets a matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles, and that is on Sunday at prime time that last evening game bad matchup negative 3.6 fantasy points above expectation and Kyron Williams ever since Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup have gotten back into the lineup he struggled to find the end zone we'll see what happens this week it is a tougher matchup but I still have him as a low-end RB1 in my rankings now Jonathan Taylor he gets a matchup against the Detroit Lions obviously that is a very tough matchup as well that's been a tough matchup all year long when you look at the fantasy points above expectation right now that's negative 4.3 fantasy points above expectation so not really allowing a ton of extra points to the running back position should be a tougher matchup for Jonathan Taylor and we'll see how Anthony Richardson fares as the starter again against a very tough defense so let's move on to tier four tier four I got six running backs in this tier and these are the safe running back twos here in fantasy football this week and keep in mind this list is going to get thin very quickly and that's because we have a ton of bye weeks this week so just keep that in mind when you're setting your lineups this week but tier four coming in at 13 I got Brian Robinson Jr. then I got Tyrone Tracy Aaron Jones Ramondre Stevenson J.K. Dobbins and Kareem Hunt coming in at 18. That rounds out the safe running back two tier. There's some very solid matchups in this tier. Starting it off with Brian Robinson at 13, he gets the Dallas Cowboys, who have been a good matchup for fantasy football running backs. Right now, allowing 3.7 fantasy points above expectation. So there should be some points to go around. That's obviously going to trickle down to Austin Eckler as well, who I will talk about here later in this video. But this should be a very solid matchup for Brian Robinson. Now, when you look at Ramondre Stevenson at 16, he also also has a good matchup. He gets the Miami Dolphins. It is on the road in Miami, but they have allowed 2.3 fantasy points above expectation this year. So it should match up fine for Ramondre Stevenson. He has gotten a significant workload and his rest of season schedule is pretty damn good. When you look at it, there's a lot of really solid matchups. So Ramondre Stevenson, probably sneaky here at the end of the year with Drake May under center. 
And then the last player I want to talk about, the best matchup by far on the slate for running backs this week, it is going to be Kareem Hunt at 18. When you look at the Carolina Panthers this year, they have been allowing 9.6 fantasy points above expectation. Let me just say that again almost 10 points above the expected fantasy point production being allowed by the Carolina Panthers. That is a massive, massive number. So Kareem Hunt should have the ability to feast in this matchup against the Carolina Panthers. There should be plenty of rushing opportunity to go around. We also might have the return of Isaiah Pacheco in this matchup as well. So we're going to be keeping an eye out for that one. We'll talk about Isaiah Pacheco a little bit later, but Kareem Hunt coming in for me at 18 should have a very, very good matchup here in this one this week. And now that I'm even looking at it, 18 might be a little bit low. I probably need to move Kareem Hunt up my rankings just a little bit more. Now let's move on to tier five. Tier five is a massive tier and these are the fringe running back twos. I have a total of eight running backs in this tier. It's going to go from running back 19 all the way to running back 26. We'll kick it off with Najee Harris followed by DeAndre Swift, Tuba Hubbard, Javante Williams, Rashad White, Austin Eckler, Bucky Irving, and then Tony Pollard to cap off this tier. There is a lot of matchups that we can talk about. Let's kick it off at 19. This is a tough matchup for Najee Harris. He does play Thursday night against Cleveland. Right now, the fantasy points above expectation being allowed by the Cleveland Browns is negative 3.2. So a little bit of a tougher matchup for Najee Harris. That's going to trickle down and affect Jalen Warren as well. We'll talk about Jalen Warren later. DeAndre Swift also has a tough matchup against Minnesota. Minnesota has been very, very vulnerable to wide receivers so far this year, but they've been very, very good against the running back position. DeAndre Swift, right now they're allowing negative 5.4 fantasy points above expectations, so I think it could be a little bit of a tougher matchup for Swift here. And he is kind of forfeiting some of those goal line carries right now to Roshan Johnson, which obviously is not what you want to see if you have DeAndre Swift in your lineups. Now, the worst matchup by far on the slate is going to be Chuba Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard, he does get the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Kansas City Chiefs have been lights out against running backs so far this year. Right now, when you look at that fantasy points above expectation, it is negative 8.6 fantasy points. Now we talked about how great of a matchup it was for the Kansas City Chiefs to run against the Carolina Panthers. It is going to be very, very hard for the Carolina Panthers to run against the Kansas City Chiefs. Chuba Hubbard, I love what he's been doing this year. I think he's going to be very good for us the rest of the season, but this is a horrible, horrible matchup for Chuba Hubbard. So I am tempering those expectations quite significantly here this week. Now, Javante Williams, he has a good matchup this week. He plays against the Las Vegas Raiders. Right now, they're allowing 3.7 fantasy points above expectations. So I think you can play Javante Williams quite safely. We had the object estimate scare there two weeks ago. Last week, it didn't really matter. Javante Williams still carried the load for the Denver Broncos. I think he's the starting running back moving forward. That Audric Estime might just be an outlier. So Estime to me, he's kind of a drop candidate this week. We talked about that in the waiver episode. Javante Williams, a top 24 back for me in my rankings this week. And I think we can play him with confidence. Now, also you have that good matchup, like I talked about for Brian Robinson, that trickles down to Austin Eckler. Obviously the same thing, Dallas Cowboys, 3.7 fantasy points above expectation. Eckler being used in the receiving game quite significantly right now. He is definitely a player that we can still play as a fringe running back to this week. And then a bad matchup for Tony Pollard. He's the last matchup I want to touch on at the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans have been very good against the fantasy football running back position this year, right now allowing negative 3.6 fantasy points above expectations. So Tony Pollard, he's been a little bit banged up. He's had some tough matchups. This is another tough matchup this week. I think he is a fringe running back too, maybe flirting with that RB3 type of material here this week as we head into week 12. Now let's look at the low upside RB3s. There's not a lot of these guys. Like I said, this list gets thin quickly because of the bye weeks here this week. Coming in at 27, Isaiah Pacheco, the Kansas City Chiefs, 28, Rico Dowdle, and 29, Nick Chubb. End of list. Really, the only guy that I want to talk about in this tier is going to be Isaiah Pacheco. He is questionable with the ankle injury. It is not certain yet. He hasn't been ruled as active for this game yet, but if he gets into this game, I expect him to have a lesser workload than Kareem Hunt. I expect them to work him in very slowly, but like we said, this matchup is beautiful for Isaiah Pacheco. You couldn't ask for a better matchup for him to come back into the lineup for the Kansas City Chiefs, so 9.6 fantasy points above expectation there's probably a pretty solid chance that Isaiah Pacheco finds himself in the end zone in this matchup even if it's just a couple short goal line carries that they give him here this week Pacheco to me he's a low upside RB3 probably a lighter workload but the matchup is so good you have to probably still plug him into your lineups if you have him as a top 30 option at the running back position now let's move on to tier 7 tier 7 is those flex plays now these flex plays are guys you can play in a pinch if you need them like I said there's plenty of bye weeks this week so you might need to play some of these guys Let's talk about all of them. I got about seven guys, I think, to get through the rest of them. Going to Raheem Mostert, Jalen Warren, Jerome Ford, Trey Benson, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, 
and Zach Charbonnet to finish off the list. Now, Raheem Mostert, we said he got a little bit banged up. We'll see how much Jalen Wright is moved into the lineup here this week. But Raheem Mostert in this matchup against New England, who is one of those better matchups, allowing 2.7 fantasy points above expectation, you probably can still play Raheem Mostert, assuming he is going to be activated and they say that there is no injury designation going into the weekend. Now, that bad matchup for Najee Harris, we said it trickled down to Jalen Warren. Still should be able to play him this week as a flex. It is that negative 3.2 fantasy points above expectation from Cleveland, but Jalen Warren, he does a lot in the receiving game as well, so he should have some PPR appeal if you need him here this week. And the last bad matchup, we talked about it with Derrick Henry, a bad matchup for Justice Hill as well against the Los Angeles Chargers. Negative 3.5 fantasy points above expectations, but like we said, Justice Hill, he is being used in the receiving game, so he can have some PPR appeal just like Jalen Warren. He's still not going to be a huge factor in this game, so just a flex play for me. But overall, those are kind of the flex plays that I think you can play all of these guys if you need them in a pinch. Go ahead and plug them into the lineup if you have to. All right, so there you have it, folks. That is my top 36 running backs as we head into week 12 of the fantasy football season. Like I said earlier, we already did the wide receiver version of this episode, so make sure you are subscribed to this channel and go check out that video when you have some time at the end of this one. I'll make sure that we link it in the description for you to go watch. Now, also, with that being said, hit the like button for us if you did enjoy today's content, you found something informative, actionable, and entertaining entertaining, whatever it may be. If you like the content, hit the like button. It does help this channel quite a lot. And also make sure you go join our Discord. We do have a free Discord linked in the description. If you want to join that and hang out in a community of 250 plus people that want to talk fantasy football with you, help you guys with trade advice, waiver advice, any fantasy football question that you got, and you want direct access to me to answer your questions 24-7, 365, make sure you go join that Discord. It is free to join. Like I said, there is no risk in doing that. But with all of that being said, I have nothing else for you guys today. I will see you tomorrow for our must start and must sit wide receivers and running backs of the week, but I have nothing else. So I will see you on our next episode, but until then, peace out.